electron configurations for potassium and iron. That helps us also to understand how these elements can ionize or become ions and how many electrons they like to lose. Electron configurations can help us to determine that. Watch. Potassium, if you go through the periodic table, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. By the way, you need a really good book or chart or something to show you what those orbitals look like. S orbitals are spherical and p orbitals are double lobed orbitals, d orbitals are lobed and weird and stuff like that. Have a look at those diagrams. I'm not going to draw them because I'm a terrible artist. So, look at this. Potassium has this as an electron configuration. It's got electrons at n equals 1, 2, and 3, and only one at n equals 4. n equals 4 is outside of all those other orbitals. The electron at n equals 4 is further away from the nucleus. It's trying to look and be attracted to a nucleus of 19 protons, but that electron is so shielded by all the other electrons that are buried beneath it, that we say that it is very effectively screened. So it has an effective nuclear charge placed on that electron that is very small, if you know what I mean. That's called the, the effective nuclear charge is generally abbreviated Z with an EFF afterwards, the Zeth. So this outermost electron doesn't feel the nucleus very much, and so therefore it's relatively, I'm not going to say easy, but relatively easier to be able to pluck it away than all the other electrons buried beneath it because it can't feel the nucleus very well. So potassium doesn't mind losing that one electron to get a positive one charge. And on the periodic table, it's an alkali metal with a positive one charge. <gasps> Iron is element 26. So here's its electron configuration all the way to 3D6. Now you're going to say, why did you write the 3D after the 4S? Because that's the kind of the way it occurs in the periodic table. But you can write it like that, it's okay. What are the outermost electrons, however? Well, at n equals 4, they're the outermost electrons. So these electrons here, we don't really touch them to ionize iron or to pull away electrons from iron to make it a cation. We pull away the outermost electrons first because they're the ones that have the lower zeth effective nuclear charge. Hey! That means then we could take away both of iron's outermost electrons relatively well and leave it with a two positive charge. Doesn't iron have a two positive charge? Yeah, of course it does, but it also has a three positive. <laughs> 3D6. Remember that at 3D you can have five orbitals. So we'll put boxes for each of the orbitals or suborbitals. An electron here, we abbreviate them, well that's two, that's two, we abbreviate them with little arrows. One electron, two electrons, three electrons, four electrons, five electrons, six electrons. Two electrons in a space fighting for that close, that small space. Those electrons hate each other. So for this electron to be able to say, hey, I don't like it here, you know, I mean everybody else has got their own room and, and I don't, I'm leaving. And so it's relatively easy to be able to take away this electron too. Take away one of the 3D electrons and leave it with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, gone, and 3d5. It loses three electrons relatively easy. Guess what? Iron most popularly has a three positive charge because of this. <gasps> Beautiful! All of that sets us up to talk about three important trends on the periodic table. The first one, first ionization energy. Now an ionization energy is how much energy is required to remove the outermost electron, the first ionization energy, from a gaseous element. So after it's been heated up to a gas, how, can, how much energy does it take to pull away the first electron? Well for sodium, remember, it doesn't require that much because its outermost electron is 3s1. So it's out there away from the the other electrons that are in closer, the 1s and the 2s, those are called the core electrons. n equals 3, just a little bit outside, easier to pluck off that electron. Okay, now what's the trend then? What about magnesium? Well, you would expect then that the first ionization energy, well, it's easier to pluck off that electron too, but you know, you've got more protons in the nucleus as you go across, so electrons are attracted closer at the same energy level, 
and all of the outermost electrons in this row are at n equals 3. And so, it becomes harder to pull them away because you've got more protons in the nucleus attracting the outermost electron. What's the trend? As you go from left to right on the periodic table, the first ionization energy increases. Now, there's something else. You don't just get to take away electrons from elements. Sometimes we give electrons to elements, right? Like to make chloride ion, Cl negative, or S2 negative, or P3 negative. They gain electrons to become a little bit more stable, right? Okay, so what's the trend for taking in an electron on the periodic table? Anytime you bring an electron from n equals infinity down below into the atom, energy is released, you see? So, that's called electron affinity, or how favorable is it to bring in the electron? Well, as you increase the number of protons, electrons are attracted closer to the nucleus. And so therefore, more energy is released, it becomes more favorable, the affinity, or how much I like the electron, increases as we go from left to right. Electron affinity increases also, going from left to right on the periodic table. But what about the size of the atom itself, or its radius. Well, going from sodium to magnesium and then to aluminum and silicon, what's going to happen? As you gain more protons, the electrons at that outermost level are sucked in closer. So it might sound weird, but as the atomic number increases and we go across the periodic table, it's almost counterintuitive, isn't it? That the atomic radius decreases. And it's true, as the mass increases of the element going across, its radius, in terms of size, decreases. More protons sucking in the outermost electrons. That's fascinating. But then, of course, it jumps right back up when we go from n equals, say, 3, to potassium, where its outermost electron is at n equals 4. Now, all of a sudden, all the n equals 3's are filled, and to put on n equals 4, for s orbital, chunk, there it goes, and the radius gets bigger again, and then goes smaller as we go across. Those are the three trends.